Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. Welcome to Beer Nuts, a weekly excursion into the world of craft beer. Brought to you by MichiganBeerGuide.com. And now, here are the Beer Nuts. Welcome to Beer Nuts, episode 171. We're going to have some real fun tonight. We are reviewing gas station beers. We'll tell you a little bit more about the format of the episode after we introduce each other. There's five beer nuts here, and we're going to review ten beers. You know, at least five good ones, and five maybe not so good ones. So, uh, JR here from Vale, Arizona, just south of Tucson. And my last untapped check-in was Ancho Chili Lava Cake from Odd Side Ales, an Imperial Stout. A nice little peppery uh Finish on it. Really enjoyable beer from the great state of Michigan. So uh, we're now going to go over to uh, Georgia, to John Hill. All right. Hey, guys. Good to be here from Atlanta. Uh, so my last untapped check-in was last night. I drank a, a soloed <laughs> uh, Swinging Hammers from Cigar City. It's part of their El Catador Club. And it is an imperial stout with Tahitian vanilla beans, graham crackers, cacao nibs, aged in bourbon barrels. And mm. it was delicious. Damn. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's go to the third John of the show, John Golden, back in Michigan. Oh, okay. Well, okay. All right. I, I apparently I got lost for a minute there. So my last uh, untapped check-in was a Java Latte from Victory Brewing Company. It was a... a Stout, uh, co- kind of a coffee milk stout. Um, pretty average. Nothing, uh, nothing to write home about, but uh, not, not bad at the same time. But just great, average sort of. Just a nice coffee stout. Okay, and uh, let's go down to Delaware. Welcome back, Scott. Hey, it's good to be back, John. My last uncheck, un, wow. My last untapped check-in was very, very chaser. Um, by Elder Pines out of Pennsylvania, and um, it was a it was a fruity ale, and uh, it was quite refreshing. It was good, and I, I rated it at a four point two five, and I enjoyed it. But that's my last and un, untapped. Great, well, thanks for joining us, Scott. And now, last but not least, to Dugout in Michigan. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Dugout in Austin, Michigan. And my last untapped check-in was Stone Enjoy by 7-4-2020. It was killer, but man, how bold of them to think we're all going to make it that far. (laughs) Well, at least it's fresh. Yeah, it was fresh. It was delicious. It was good. I'm just kidding. All righty now. They think we're going to make it that far, but no further. Right. I need to enjoy it before then. Yeah. You You know know what? Yep. Every day we wake up is a good day, right? So let's just, uh, before we start, uh, we're, I'm real excited to share the specifics of this unique episode. It's going to be a little different. Um, but before I reveal that, I would like to invite all our listeners to please crack open a cold one. It doesn't have to be great tonight because we're going to be having some great and some maybe value-priced beers because we're talking about gas station beers, right? So whatever you like to drink is fine with us. Hey, um, I saw Milwaukee, Milwaukee's Best on uh, um, what's the show about catching all the crabs up in Alaska? God, I can't remember the name of the damn show. But Keeping up with the Kardashians? Deadliest Catch. Deadliest Catch. Last night, the, the captain got drunk on Milwaukee's Best, and uh, he had to sleep it off, and they had to wait till the morning to take to take off because he was drinking that particular beer but so i digress so anyway you know whatever you're drinking is fine with us we're not a bunch of pretentious beer snobs the motto of our show is to to introduce more good people to more good beer that's what we're about and uh maybe tonight we'll be introducing to people to some not so good beers but you know what hey 
every beer was brewed by a brewer and somebody's proud of brewing it and somebody's happy to drink it. So, um, we're going to have some fun. So let's just read the, uh, description of tonight's episode. It says, this was the instructions sent to each beer nut for this week. Pick a random gas station near home that sells beer, find the best craft beer available and also find the lowest budget beer they offer. I suggest selecting from the single section. We'll keep an open mind and review both ends of the spectrum on this episode. And that's just what we're about to do. So we all uh, got together before the show and agreed in the interest of our palates. We were going to drink the, the cheaper, the lower value bre- price brands first and then move on to something good later. So by the end of the night, we'll be uh, in a much better place. And they also got to credit John Hill for mandating that we drink at least 12 ounces of whatever you have. Most of us have a larger size than that, but we're not going to get away with a sip and you pour it down the sink because beer is beer and it's meant to be drank, right? So I'm going to kick it off here because uh, I have a beer that I actually sold a ton of back in the day when I was with a distributor in uh, Northern Virginia, and I sold a lot of this stuff, and it was primarily to uh you know lower income areas but uh people aren't drinking this for the taste they're drinking it for the buzz but i do have a sentimental attachment to it because i used to make a lot of commission selling this stuff and um i only wish it was in a wide mouth bottle because it is the infamous mickey's fine malt liquor in a 24 ounce can i will be posting pictures of these beers on our instagram account which uh we've got a lot of new instagram followers thank you for that so I got the uh, the, the murder hornet <laughs> featured on the can, a uh, green can with the, the murder hornet, or at least a Mickey's hornet as their logo, and that's about it. And there's really nothing to this other than the green, the hornet, and the big Mickey. So I got a 24-ounce can. Uh, I wanted to make sure this was ice cold. I put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes before the show. To try to numb my taste buds. So here we go. I'm actually pouring – I'm not pouring that into a snifter. Here, I got a different beer glass. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to try to be completely unbiased and not make fun of this beer because um, I'm going to be keep an open mind. That was what we're supposed to do. So I'm going to review this just like I would a, uh, you know, a typical lager, but I'm going to be honest too. So so I just poured it into a glass and it's, uh, it's the appearance is pretty good. I mean, look at this, guys. I mean, we can see each other. We're using cameras again now, so... Um, let me change my screen a little bit. I'm not looking up any uh, websites for this one though. So nice golden color looks just like a uh, you know a nice lager something. Uh, really, uh, come on, what's going on here? No problem. Oh, so you're stalling. Having to taste it is what you're doing. I'm stalling. So look, there's actually I don't know if you guys can see because I can't see my screen right now. It's kind of messed up, but. Uh, there's nothing floating in that, is there? Okay, I got it back now. There we go. Okay. So, no, there's nothing floating. You got a really nice, lively bubbles. It actually looks really flavorful. If I didn't know what was in this, I would be like, boy, that looks pretty good. I'm going to keep an open mind. Look at that. Nice. You got like a two-finger head on that. Nice, nice snow white head. So far, everything looks good. So, on the head, just to, to taste like grainy, you know, like just like a regular American adjunct lager would, t- would smell. Just some grainy, nothing really out of the ordinary. So really not much of an aroma at all. Um, pretty benign. So let's just taste this thing. It's actually not as bad as I thought. Um, it tastes pretty good on the uh, at the beginning. It tastes just like a, a good lager. And then a little bit of sweetness. Really not, not that bad tasting, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm kind of impressed. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find a flaw, like a sourness or something. But it's really not there. It's really pretty... Pretty innocent, you know, just tastes like a fizzy yellow lager to me. I don't even know the ABV on this. So, I mean, really, I don't have anything really negative to say about it. It doesn't have that much flavor at all, to be honest. But it doesn't have a bad flavor. It just doesn't have much flavor at all. It's a, but it's not negatively tasted. I, I can't find an ABV on here. Where is this? 24 ounces. 20, I don't see an ABV. JR, I think it's somewhere in the five and a half to six range on that particular. Oh, it's got to be higher than that. It's a malt liquor. I thought it was like eighty. You might think that, but it's not. I, I, oh, I'm pretty sure. 
if I'd have known that, I'd have got Steel Reserve for my right. That's where you got to go, man. Those were the two choices at this price point. It was two dollars and nine cents for a twenty-four ounce can. Much and better honestly, for the having buck. sold Mickey's, I am convinced that it's higher. I'm going to look that up. But really, uh, not not really much point in me taking any more time on this. I, I, I wish I had a better. I'm going to take one more taste, see if I can come with any more descriptors. <laughs> really, I, it just doesn't taste terrible. There might be a little bit of a metallic taste that's not that great. I mean, you can tell it's probably a, a budget beer. It doesn't taste much different than natural light um, to me. Um, it's just a benign, not you know, not much flavor to it, but really not horrible drinking beer. Uh, I would imagine uh, tomorrow morning I could feel it if I had a 40 of this or something, but um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask for any more comments before uh, someone else goes, but if there are none, um, we can ask somebody else to step up and do the next beer, but uh, I'm going to look up and see if I can get the ABV. I am surprised it's not on the can, so maybe you're right, Doug. Maybe they don't want you to know. They want you to think it's this big 10 percenter or something, and it's really... You know, it would be cheaper to produce, obviously, without all that alcohol in it. I just looked yeah. it up. I mean, yeah, that's, I, 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 I think could, it's in the five and a half to six range. Yeah. Um, which, you know, back before craft beer was uh, around, you know, five and a half, uh, six percent beer was considered. I'm, I'm checking high. it into uh, Untapped. That should have it. Oh, and it's got a two point six one rating, and I'm I'm actually astonished that fifty eight of my uh, my friends have fifty eight check ins for a two point one nine. And you are right, it's 5.6%. Wow. Fooled me, because if I'd have known that, I'd have got the steel reserve, but that's not a bad thing. So this is really... You know, I, drank, um, I drank enough of that in high school to know every nuance of that stuff, including the old pull-top cans that oh, yeah. slice your fingers off. Yeah, you know? little, like barrel-shaped can. Well, they were the barrel-shaped bottles, but they had a single pull-off tab that would just turn into a razor blade. <laughs> I remember as we were opening it. Wider mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The big mouth. So you're drinking um, faster. I'd be willing to bet that back in the day, this was higher APV and it's been altered since then. But who knows? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I think malt liquor was always in that category. And when um, ice beer came out, it was right around that same. You know, maybe just a little bit below malt liquor. Uh, certain ones, you know, Steel Reserve, yeah, that's cranked up, and Juice was all cranked up. But before then, the beers were just all some, somewhere in that six range, six percent range. Well, uh, shame on me for not doing my homework because I, I had just assumed with malt liquor it was going to be a higher ABV. Not that I'm disappointed because this is easy to drink, and if it was higher ABV, it would probably not taste as good. It would be all boozy, but. That's okay. It'll make it easier to drink my minimum 12 ounces of this and move on to something better later. So uh, maybe not such a bad thing because my other alternative, had I known, I probably would have gone with Steel Reserve. And that probably will uh, damage my kidneys and liver a lot more than this will. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for me. Mickey's Malt Liquor. A you know, big find here is that it's not really that strong. and uh, uh, But really, not a bad it's a bad, it's a really easy to drink, you know, easy drinking beer that isn't as bad as I wouldn't give it a two point one nine, but certainly not going to get a three either. I'd say a two and a half, two point seven five, somewhere in there, but not I nearly. Know, not I think in those situations, our- in those situations, you judge the style. So if you're drinking a Schlitz and it's American Lager, you know what's whether it tastes good to you or not. I mean, that's it should be a higher thing because it's it's so dead on point for the style yeah and that's what people do on untapped uh people that aren't bjcp educated or anything and again we're we're talking our audience isn't always you know uh the refined beer judges as bjcp people would be but you should be judging this on the style and not a lot of people are like oh i don't like fizzy yellow lagers so they give a perfectly brewed one a low rating and that's not fair to the brewer the brewer's brewing what he's supposed to brew and I would agree, Doug. This really, this is surprising me. I thought I would, I was going to be like cringing when I tasted it, and it's not bad at all. I can drink this. Maybe it does deserve a three, three and a half. I'll, I'll debate that. I may just check it in with no rating. But uh, anyway, enough about it. Let's, let's find out what else we find in those gas stations that's cheap and affordable. Yeah, I was going to say, why don't I go next? Since you seem to have kind of led up to uh, between you and Doug to. Uh, to my beer, which is actually a Schlitz. 
<laughs> and I am a BJCP judge and, and judged it uh, based on, on the style. Um, so this is, uh, this is not the Schlitz malt liquor. Um, this is just the regular old Schlitz, which, you know, most of you will kind of remember is either your, your, your dad's beer or maybe even your grandfather's beer. And it's currently owned by, uh, um, uh, who is it that owns PBR now? It, same, it's, it's owned by, by PBR, I guess we'll call it that. Um, and they had stopped making it for quite a while, and they brought it back, um, I don't know, maybe five, ten years ago. And what had happened is, is over the course of time, they, they started making it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and using less quality ingredients and more adjuncts and just it turned into a really awful beer and people stopped buying it. Um, when they came back out with it again, uh, they went to the original recipe, which, so now you could actually say, yeah, maybe this isn't your dad's beer. Maybe this actually is your grandfather's beer. Um, and it's actually, it's, it's not a bad beer. It's uh, I mean, it's, it's extremely clear. I don't know if you guys can, see this but i mean it, it would even be you know you would you would say that it's brilliant as far as the, the clarity it's a nice really nice yellow um yellow color um kind of starts to go a little bit towards gold but it's, it really stays in the yellow category and um it's a uh, it's got a nice sweet malty flavor to it um there is a, a faint faint amount of uh of corn or dms um which in every other beer in the world except for american lagers and american light lagers is considered a flaw but it is an acceptable um characteristic to to this style of beer and it's not uh, it's not offensive it's there um very slightly but it's it's good it's not offensive um the nose is a very um has uh, some grainy kind of sweetness to it, as well as uh, a little bit of a uh, grassy kind of earthy um, characteristic to it. And the flavor is, uh, let me take another sip here. The flavor is, is actually, it's a really malty sweetness. Um, there, there is some hop presence. It's not, uh, it's not, you know, overly bitter or anything. It just kind of provides a nice balance. Um, I don't think it's a exceptional style of uh, example of the the style, um, but it's not a bad beer either. And you know, rating wise, uh, I have to double check and see, but I think on tap I put it at like a two seven five or a three, kind of right in that range. You know, just a a, a good you know a good example of the style, um, but nothing that really blows your socks off, um, but nothing that makes you want to. Um, go spit it out and d dump it out right away either. <laughs> um, so not a bad beer. Um, and it is again, like I said, it's, it's back to being your grandfather's beer and not, uh, not just some adjunct swill that, uh, they decided to make it as cheap as they can. It's actually kind of gone back to its original, um, heritage and, you know, back to its origins. So if you want a cheap beer, I, I would recommend this. So I think that's about all I got. I can remember going to uh, my best friend in high school. Uh, his family owned a hotel that had a bar in it. And I used to spend the night at my buddy's house when I was like 12 years old. I remember the waitress at the bar would always say, what do you have on tap? Schlitz, Schmitz, Bud, or Mick is what she said. Schlitz, it's like a tongue twister. Schlitz, Schmitz, Bud, or Mick. But back in the day, it was a, it was a mainstream beer. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Who's next? I'm gonna I'm gonna step up because I I want to drink this beer while it's ice cold and uh, so I'm gonna try to get <laughs> in early a little bit um, <clears throat> for my cheap beer. Now I stopped at a, a little tiny two pump gas station in Havity Grace, Maryland, um, which uh, provided which had a, a pretty good selection of liquor, but not much on a beer selection. So for my cheap selection, I chose. Sierra Nevada, wild little thing. It is a sour ale, and um, it cost me about seven bucks for a six pack. 
So a little bit more than a dollar per can, you know. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what a sour ale is going to be like. So on the pour, it comes out with a pinkish color uh, with a very thin head. Um, on the nose, it smells really fruity. It smells like not citrusy, but more like melony, like like almost like a like a, a watermelon or a or a um, honeydew melon. And uh, let's give it a taste and see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody oh. needs a camera to actually really, uh, up. If only we could have got a screenshot of that. <laughs> oh yikes! <Oof>. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me compose myself. Take uh, another sip so I can get a screenshot. Oh, do I have to? I mean, it's it's rough. I don't want to say it's rough. I don't want to talk. Look, somebody did, like you said, John. Somebody brewed this with the intent of reaching an audience, and I and I don't want to diminish. Fuck up. This guy's a torturer. Um, I'm gonna say this is uh, <laughs> first of all, all the all all the fruit, all the fruit is lost on on the taste. So you lose the total fruits fruit from the smell so when you grab the taste when you actually get it on your t- tongue it tastes like a um like a citrus uh, a hoppy citrus flavor uh, it, it's uh difficult to explain and um it it certainly isn't something i think i'd i'd go out and buy again can you get one um, more swig up so i can get the screenshot <laughs> perfect there you go oh. All right. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish it because that's what we're doing. But, I, I mean, I, as a whole, I'm going to say that the flavor does not match the smell. Um, and that's a shame because it had a great, it had a great odor. It, it, had, it was great on the nose. But the flavor is more like an ale that, that, that has some, some melon in it. That, that's not, I, I, it's very bizarre. It doesn't match. So that's going to be my review of this. And I apologize but here we go guys. I'm gonna, the rest of it i'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that the reason it was seven dollars a six pack is probably because it's been sitting there a long time and they just needed to close it out i think Doug out yeah. also a good beer he got on the close out list uh all yes is good. yes indeed and it's right up that same alley so i should just follow him right up here go uh, for it what i have is from our friends at shorts brewing and it is a whiskey sour inspired. It doesn't say anything after inspired, so I'm assuming it's beer aged in Jameson barrels or Jameson Ooh. casks. So, and these, and this was on the castaway shelf. I don't think I paid a dollar for this. I really don't. Um, God only knows how long it's been there. Um, but so. On the nose, you do get a little bit of barrel, and, and I mean, you guys can see, of course, like super with beautiful clarity and beautiful color. The head on it is just perfect. Um, on the nose, you get a lot of citrus, a uh, slight bit of barrel. Hey, hey, Doug, you need to turn on your camera so that we can uh, we can see the color that you're trying to show us. My oh, camera's on. It. His camera's yeah. on. My camera's on. Oh, all I see is the little circle that says Do. Um, oh, no, it's on. It's on mine. I can see them. Okay, so I'm going to give this an honest review. There's a, um, a really nice frothy head on this. It's um, just like actually almost devoid of drinking beer. It's closer to drinking uh, sweet and sour mix that's been put through a uh, soda stream. Um, the tartness is just unbelievably off the charts and will kill anything in its way. I'm not getting any barrel whatsoever. Um, it's really just this lemon bomb, lemon lime, and almost some sweetness to it, too. I'm going to have a hard time getting just 12 ounces down, man. I think I started a few, too, and oh, whew. <laughs> It may require a Tums intervention before I can finish 12. Let's see as the show goes on. But, hey, less than a buck. Why not? Yeah, well, you know, you you take a chance on that uh, closeout shelf. But I happen to have seen a picture of Doug's second beer, the good beer that he got on the close. I think it was on a closeout, right? Yeah, that was closeout shelf, too. So all is not lost. There's still bargains to be found on the closeout shelf. Don't be discouraged by these last two selections. 
Okay. Oh, just, well, we, that's I one way. I half the beer right there just now <laughs> on the show. <laughs> way to take one for the team. Mm. <laughs> All yeah, right. Yeah, way to take one for the team. I drank this so you don't have to. Well, I might be doing that with the rest <laughs> of my Mickey's too. Whatever my, the rest of my Mickey's, it really doesn't taste bad, so I can sip it down. ChristopherMedia.net. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Pip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name and price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous walrus. The bulbous walrus. The name your price tool. Only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Pip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name and price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous walrus. The bulbous walrus. The name your price tool. Only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. ChristopherMedia.net. All right, I think we're down to our last cheapo beer. Turn it over to John. All right. Great unveiling. Colt 45. High gravity, because All right. it was two oh nine, two dollars and nine cents for either this or the regular, and I figured why not go for the high gravity? Ooh, why not? So it's a eight and a half percent, and it works every time. So <laughs> let's see what we got here with Colt forty five high gravity. Oh, they look bad. Nice little head there. Nice golden color. Kind of smells like feet a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but not much other smell. It, it smells like it's a little skunked, to be honest with you. Let's see. Shouldn't be skunked in a can. I would hope not, but that's what it smells like. Um <laughs> Really sweet, a lot of malt. Uh, ugh, little grass. All right. I'm gonna ask you. To, hold on. <laughs> and that's a flavor that's gonna stick with me for a while. It's got a finish that goes on forever. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. Got a good screenshot of you too. <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd. Uh, I I wish I had volunteered first so that this was just a little bit more cold because. And you know what. <laughs> you're the one that made the 12 ounce rule so you're gonna have to live with it <laughs> uh, yeah i mean yeah i guess if you need eight and a half percent of a 24 ounce beer just to get the job done this will work every time uh, <laughs> but flavor wise not so much i don't i don't think many people are drinking that one for the taste <laughs> no and i'm just gonna try and uh, uh work my way through this just Real quick right now. So, cheers, fellas. Cheers. All right, well. well I think, like, uh, most people that buy that beer, uh, chugging oh. it like you just did is the, is the preferred method. Best yeah. way to dispose of it. <laughs> wow, it is um, just very, very sweet. Jarring. So, I would, I would venture to say that probably the best ones of these are between John Golden and I, the Slits and the Mickey's. Uh so, I think we made out uh, the best. Um, everybody else seemed to not really enjoy theirs, John. So, <laughs> yeah. Cheers, uh, Mickey's bottoms up. <laughs> oh, I pulled mine already. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting, waiting to crack open the good one. 
Well, before we get to the good ones, um, give me a minute here. Uh, Chris, um, Z Beer Man, Chris, um, had some work obligations and is unable to join us tonight for the news. But he was kind enough to send me two industry reports that I could pull some stuff out of. I'm going to first go to the the coveted uh, um, some information in the beer business beer marketers insight newsletter. Let me see if I can pull. Uh, there's a deal uh, breakthrough buying Bonanza in Las Vegas. Nobody's really that interested in it except me because I used to work in Vegas. But there's a distributor uh, selling out there. Um, more consolidation in the industry. And the big news there in Vegas is uh, the Miller brands will all be going to Breakthrough Beverage while the rest of the, uh, the major brands go to Southern Glazers. But that's not really of much interest to everybody. There's something about Heineken that's no interest. Molson Coors will lay off 188 workers in Canada by end of 2021. I don't think much there. Uh, here's something that might be of interest to you Michigan guys. AB is the only big supplier not providing keg relief in Michigan. So apparently AB offered distributors 50% back on their untapped kegs that are going out of code because of COVID everywhere except Michigan where they're not doing anything because it says because they're just they're pissed at the distributors who pushed for the Distributor Independence Act late last year, which I believe had to do with, uh, well, I'm not sure, so I'm not going to talk out of thing. But anyway, um, I know uh, we always haven't been so kind to the, uh, the big ABI empire, and apparently in the state of Michigan, they are not helping their distributors. So uh, that's all I'm going to pull from this one. The other uh, report is... Uh, Craft centric. So hold on, let me pull that one up. That will be a lot more interesting to us, I think. So thank you, Z Beerman, um, for at least forwarding this newsletters to me. This is the Craft Beer News, June second edition. So the first thing on here is an article saying that craft beer sales have slowed to up seventeen percent in IRI. Um, it says Firestone. Is, let me see. Bell's is back among the top fifteen vendors, up thirty three percent. Good news for Bell's, an independent brewer out of Michigan. We love that. See what else? It's something about Firestone being up. I don't see anything of that. Uh, Blue Moon, we don't really consider that craft, so they're dead to me. Okay, uh, let's move on. Just go through <laughs> this. Um, the majority of craft brewers optimistic they can serve, survive 2020. Um, I'm not going to go into that. Um, nearly. Here's a good one. Nearly all brewery, uh, craft breweries that applied received PPP loans. In eligible states, 80% have reopened or will reopen soon. So I know there is some doom and gloom that a lot of breweries are going to close. Apparently those loans are keeping them afloat. Um, One-third of breweries now offering delivery. Just two-thirds of the breweries are distributing. Um, and one last thing. I read this earlier, and I think this is interesting. There's a new distributor partnership. For North Coast Ale, our good friend uh, Matt Anderson, Doug, works for them. I think you know that. Right. They have partnered with Artisanal Imports to become its sales and marketing partner for the central and eastern regions of the U.S., including 34 states and D.C. North Coast already has wide distribution coverage in 48 states. This company restructures its sales force through a round of layoffs last year and ultimately saw volume decline in 2019, blah, blah, blah. Artisanal Imports continues to steadily add to its partners, both based in USA and abroad, including Minnesota's Fulton Brewing, Chicago-based Five Rabbit Service Area, and SFB Imports, which includes the Trap, Palm, and Rodenbach. So, another brewery, uh, uh, one of the solutions that brewers have to succeed is to partner with other smaller brewers and become a bigger, stronger um, entity in the market and uh, achieve cost synergies. Certainly hope that hasn't uh, impacted my, our good friend Matt um, with them. There's some other articles here. I'm not going to go on anymore. Nothing looks too exciting. But those are the things I'm pulling out of there. Um, and we look forward to having Z Beer Man back because he do, does this a lot better than I do. That being said, let's go on to some good beers because it was kind of painful for some of us. I'm, I'm happy to say, you know what, I only have like two – I only have uh, – a very small amount of this Mickey's left. I'm going to pour it out. I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to at least brag that I could finish a 24 ounces solid of it. it All really right, JR, JR, while you're chugging, I'm going to give a shout out to Go Five for Rabbit Cerveceria. 
Um, we reviewed a few of their beers on the show before. They use a lot of uh, Mexican-inspired um, herbs and spices and chocolates and super creative beers. They taste incredible. Um, great quality control. You know, just if you ever see their stuff, just grab it. It's cool. It's different. All right. Any other, uh, before we move on to the good beers, anybody have any home brewing updates or any other beer news? Um, breaking news. I'm still t tasting that Colt 45. Oh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> breaking news. I am uh, transferring. Ah. It'll be tomorrow. It's not going to be tonight, but I have a, a, a full batch of triple IPA that came at about 10.5% West Coast. Lots of. Um, uh cascade and uh nugget and apollo hops in it so i i did a little sample of it it was really tasting nice i mean it really fully fermented out to the ten and a half percent and so i think i'll be serving it on monday night that's the keg that's the keg uh opening for it which is our beer club meeting in my backyard because they finally released enough um or loosen up enough restrictions so we can have a meeting with a beer club. Awesome. And uh, on that line, I'm Sorry. attending my local beer Up to 100 people, but it has to be outside. My local homebrew club, the Buffalo Club, um, is meeting Saturday. And we have a beer competition in the club itself. And since I'm not brewing currently, I was uh, I volunteered to, to be a judge. So I got to go an hour early. <laughs> And we're meeting at a uh, buddy's uh, local meadery. Actually, he was on the show, uh, Michael Fry. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're meeting at the meeting room because it is the meeting room. So we're meeting at the meeting room. So I'm sure I'll have some meat after the meeting. So that'll be good. And, uh, you know, I'm uh, already uh, in plans to get my uh, Anvil brewing system and start brewing again. Sweet. It's going to be kind of challenging to brew in the summer here, but I may have to wait till. September, but uh, my my unit should be here by you know late June, by Fourth of July, and once I get it, I probably won't want to wait. So, looking forward to that. Anybody else? Uh, if not, I'm really excited to have a real beer now. But uh, I don't want to go back on my word. I have just like one inch left in my glass of the Mickey's. I'm gonna chug that down and then do it. Go to the good stuff. Do it. <laughs> Chug, chug, chug. Really not that bad. Surprise. <laughs> as he immediately takes a sip of water. Said, yeah, as he immediately slugs a half of water. <laughs> so when we, we put this episode down, and one of the things we put, go to your local closest to home gas station or you know somewhere close to home. Well, where I live in Corona de Tucson, Arizona, um, just uh, about 20 miles southeast of uh, Tucson proper, um, there's a little gas station that you've heard me talk about before called the Roadrunner, and they have a tremendous selection of craft for a little neighborhood gas station. And I had a pretty good pick. I was going to take their most expensive beer, which was uh, Chimay Grand Reserve, but uh, it was kind of a big bottle, and I was like, eh, I don't know if I want to drink that whole thing after drinking 24 ounces of Mickey's. So uh, yeah. this caught my eye, the 2020 Firestone Walker Parabola which is uh, a lot of people know it's, it's a, uh, a yearly annual release. It's 10% ABV final. Uh, actually, no, 10.0 uh, final gravity Plato. So let me see. That's that's 13.6% alcohol. So I'll, I'll, I'll drink for messing that up. Mm. <laughs> uh, boy, it sure is nice to go from Mickey's to this. <laughs> so um, I will. Uh, the original gravity for you homebrewers, 33.0. Final Gravity 10.0 Play-Doh, 55 IBUs, British Ale Yeast. Uh, color Midnight Black, it says 149 XRM, but it's coal black. Um, and cases 1,000, or 3,000 produced, I'm sorry. So this is the barrel-aged Imperial Stout, and it's the 2020 Vintage. So I know this is uh, a lot of uh, craft beer geeks are... Uh, well aware of this brand. It used to be made in bomber bottles, and thankfully now it's in 12-ounce bottles. Cost me $11.99 retail to buy this, and it's worth every dime. Um, I'm going to describe it. It's coal black. I mean, you can't see through this at all. 
you guys are saying it. Nice, uh, dark, like a like a little bit darker than cola color head, like a, uh, a very light brown. Really, it's more of a brown than a, a tan. But uh, and, uh, and the head is holding up quite nice. I poured this a couple minutes ago, and it's still got solid. I can't even see through the head into my glass. So I'm gonna take a sip of this. I forgot to go through aroma. I was so excited to taste it. So, but I'm getting on the aroma and. Um, now that I've tasted it, I've kind of blown the ability to describe the aroma, but just unbelievable um, m- roasted malt, roasted barley, you know, just what you would want in an uh, imperial stout. And then really, really uh, great barrel influence with just the right level of bourbon. It's not too hot. Um, and But unlike some of mass-produced beers, which this is not one, um, the, the barrel influence is just the right level. It's not too boozy, but there's plenty of bourbon influence in it. Nice. I'm getting vanilla, caramel, toffee. All of, mm. one of, the, one of the, the really you know, top shelf um, offerings in this realm. I'm definitely getting lots of vanilla, and it's not a vanilla bean vanilla. It's from the wood. It's great barrel influence. and um, Not every beer that's produced these days that's barrel age has that. But this has preserved plenty of the barrel. That's what I really like about it. A um, little bit uh, of you know tannins from the wood, um, but definitely lots of caramel, vanilla, toffee. Uh, the mouthfeel is just perfect. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. It's like probably a medium to full body. Uh, probably, I probably classify it as full body. I've had ones that are thicker, but uh, it's almost a flawless beer. It really is. I mean, it's um, just what I would want. I mean, this stands up to any Bourbon County Stout and all the, all the big names, um, the Fremonts of the world, and uh, all the all the big hitters that you like. I mean, these guys know what they're doing. Um, I've never had a Firestone Walker Barrel Age uh, offering that I didn't thoroughly enjoy, and this is no exception. It's always been one of my favorites, and it really was an easy choice going to the, the Roadrunner. I did have, uh, for fifteen ninety nine. I could have got a uh, 2019 Bourbon County, but I was like, you know what? And they're done that. This this is a little bit more special to me than that. So I think I made a great choice, and I'm really thankful to have a, a gas station close by, five minutes from home. It's 2.2 miles away. It's the only store I have that's not more, not at least a 20 minute drive, and I'm really thankful that I have it because they got you know, like I said, they had Chimay Grand Reserve in there. They had all kinds of modern times and. Just a great two windows of singles, just uh, some great four packs and six packs available. Um, Not many gas stations are going to have this kind of a selection, and I'm really fortunate and thankful. So here's to the Roadrunner, and here's to uh, Firestone Walker Parabola 2020. Home run, 4.5, maybe even a 4.75. I'd give it about a 4.6. Great beer. Now the... uh I have a uh, I have a friend that lives in San Diego, and he had just informed me the other day that Firestone's getting ready to do another big run of stuff. Uh, have you heard anything about that? No, I haven't. But these, um, you know, they have a parabola. Their bar- barley wine is called Succuba, which is yeah. spelled backwards. Um, what are some of the other ones, guys? Velvet Merkin. Um, I know the yeah, parabola they've got is the, amazing. Um, they've got the social distortions. It's interesting that you brought up the Goose Island. Uh, because, you know, their head brewer is uh, Greg Brindelson, who was a uh, brewer at Goose Island in the 90s, and he was um, definitely involved in the formulation of Bourbon County Stout and all the original kickoffs on that beer. So he brings that kind of expertise with him to Firestone Walker, but it's it's their use of, um, of hops and IPAs and, you know, the Luponic Distortion, series just continuously focuses on new and um experimental ipas and then they just make batches of them very similar to what stone does with enjoy by but they've got the luponic distortion series um god they're they're they just do such great things you know and they were one of the first ones to like take their bombers down to 12 ounce uh, bottles and put them in that 9.99 to 10 12.99 range and then, you know what, if you want to drink it yourself, you got it, man. There's no problem with it. But, yeah, those guys rock. Yeah, you know, one thing I got to say, when I read the label, 55 IBUs, that kind of caught me. 
and now I know why it's so bitter. I just tasted it again with that in mind. And that's the bitterness comes that from nice. There's a hot bitterness to that. You don't see that in very many uh, barrel aged Ru Russian Imperial stouts. And that's what's given me. Remember when I described it, I said there was a little bitterness and it wasn't a negative term. It was, it's a really nice hop bitterness that adds a little bit more character to this than some of your just sweet imperial stouts that are, you know, you know, bourbon barrel age. This is uh, takes things to another level. So, man, thank you, brewers. Great, great job. And then I will always, I always look for this every year. Anybody give, give me any? Uh, we mentioned Velvet Merkin. There's, I know there's like five or six different annual um, barrel age releases from these guys. A suck -a -biz is another great barley wine, bourbon barrel age, Velvet Merkin. I, I can't think of them all off the hand. Anybody else remember any more? Well, if not... No, but I did want to say about the uh, the IBUs in that, though, is that that's kind of typical of a uh, Russian Imperial Stout is uh, because it has such huge, huge malt character to it that it has to have a lot of IBUs to, to balance it. Right. Um, and if you, I mean, you've just got to throw a ton of hops in it or you end up with a beer that's just way too sweet. Um, you know, be like more like drinking syrup or even, you know, even almost like, like milk stuff, stuff. Kind of stuff. But, you know, that, that's, uh, that's one of the, I think, you know, to me, one of the reasons why I like the Russian Imperial Stouts is because they have that, that hop um, backbone to it that, that it really stands up to the, uh, the malty sweetness. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I love Bourbon County Stout too, but it does not have that kind of bitterness to it. It just doesn't, and that's okay. They're both they're both great beers. But hey, uh, this is this is about as close to flawless as you get. So I'm going to sit back and enjoy the rest of this. I'm already starting to feel much better after that Mickey. So somebody <laughs> else take over. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'll jump in. I'll jump in. I um. While I was while I was at that same gas station, um, I grabbed a uh, New Belgian Voodoo Voodoo Ranger, and uh, New Belgian is based out of North Carolina, and um, <clears throat> they were a very small, less than a hundred thousand barrels a year brewery um, that they focused mostly on IPAs, and they have a good sour range as well. So the Voodoo Ranger is an IPA with a, I think it's a eight or a nine percent eight alcohol by volume. Um, I'm having trouble reading this right now because that last one, I think, but I think it's eight or nine percent ABV. Um, it pours. It's it's gorgeous. Uh, now I am going to preface this by saying that I'm afraid of IPAs. I really am because my and it's it's a me thing. My threshold for IPAs is very low. I get to a certain point of hoppiness where everything I'm smelling and drinking tastes like a Christmas tree is trying to be jammed down my throat. It just is all pine. And, um, you know, so I try to steer away from IPAs, but this is what they had. And I'm going to give it a fair shot and see what I come up with. So on the nose, it's uh, it's, it's citrusy in a grapefruit kind of way. It's um, it's it's it smells. It really smells actually good. I don't get I don't get that pine overpowering sensation. Um, it the head. I, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I poured this a while ago, and it's maintaining a nice thin head, um, and it's white, and it's almost like a clearish, amberish color, like a golden amber. Uh, it's really a pretty beer. It really is. Let's give it a taste. Wow, that tastes exactly like it smells. It has a nice mouthfeel. It's um, I'm drinking it a little bit warm now because I've been sitting here with it for a few minutes. Um, it's not refrigerator cold, but it's you know warming up. Um, it's got a very nice mouthfeel. It doesn't. It it's not like a thick malt, like a excuse me, like a thick stout, but it's a it's a full body feeling in your mouth. And it tastes, you get hints of, like I said, grapefruit and um, hops and and like a roasting taste, like a mm -hmm. some malt. Maybe it's, like a toasted actually really, Yeah, like a toasted, yes. It's uh, it's very good. I, I, I mean, for, for an IPA, I thoroughly am enjoying this versus the, the previous beer. Nowhere to go so, but up, um, right? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I would say that this is, uh, I would, I would rank this when I check it in, I, I'm going to rank this as like a three and a half or four, um, which is really enjoyable for an IPA. I mean, that really is. It's got a little bit of bitterness at the very end that sits back on the back of your throat, but it's not a bad bitterness. Like you were describing when it, before it's, it's, it's a nice subtle bitterness that just hangs there and makes you want another drink. So that's that's my review of um, of Voodoo Ranger by New Belgium. Yeah, I just want to add a few comments about New Belgium. You said that they're out of North Carolina. The to, Asheville, to clarify, yeah. they're actually founded in Fort Collins, Colorado. Originally, a uh, employee-owned brewery, um, and as you pointed out prior to the show, Scott, they uh, were they voted as employees to be bought out by, I think it was Lion Brewing, subsidiary of Kieran, out of, I think, Australia. And Kieran's obviously a Japanese brand. But that being said, you know, I always used to admire that they were, you know, employee-owned. And if the employees voted to, to, to sell, that's fine. Or they may have just been given an ultimatum. But I do know that each employee got $100,000 added to their retirement fund as a part, a part of that buyout. So... At least there was something in it for them, um, but the, I've I've always enjoyed. Uh, they they are a solid brewery. Um, my favorite beer they brew is their fifteen fifty four. I think it's a dark lager that I always enjoyed. A dark Belgian style lager. Um, great IPAs, very great value. You can get like a double IPA like that, like a six pack for like eight ninety nine nine ninety nine, which you know that's that's a great value. So. To, to be exact, this this was a ten dollars six imperial IPA, and sitting yeah. here drinking it, it's worth every penny of that. Um, I, I was initially introduced to to New Belgian by by Fat Tire, which is one of their beers, yep. and that's um, that's, that kind of started me down the road of of diversity in beers as well. All right, well that's that's uh, awesome. Anybody else comment? Bad. I, I had my first fat tire back in, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think. It would have been probably about 1996, maybe, 97, probably 96, um, out at, uh, in Jackson Hole in Wyoming at the Mangy Moose Saloon, uh, right at the, the base of the mountain. And uh, at the time, it was you, you could only get it out west. It was kind of one of those things. It's like they had no, uh, no distributorship on anywhere on the you know, east of the Mississippi, and uh, it was kind of one of those somewhat sought-after uh, beers for P- Easterners traveling out to the west. And fat tires. For those of us old enough to remember, it was it's the new co- it was the new Coors, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Coors was just like you couldn't get it on the other side of the Mississippi. Fat Tire was the same way. They built a yeah. reputation on on just non availability in places. And oh, um, fat tire was a much better beer than Coors. Yeah, <laughs> I would agree. I would agree with agree. that. Yeah, <laughs> much more flavor. That's for sure. <laughs> I think the Coors reputation was solely on availability, where Fat Tire it was uh, availability and the fact that it was a pretty darn good beer. I would agree. That was a really good great. choice, Scott. Thanks for sharing, and uh, glad you enjoyed it. A rare IPA that you like. So try some more of that. Yeah, that is very rare. I love the uh, yeah. Belgian triple, by the way, and that's another like for a, a Belgian style triple, a steal for the ABV that you get in that for like ten bucks a six pack. ChristopherMedia.net. For the ones who know that a little late is always too late, and that the clock doesn't stop just because you're missing a part. Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry. And our Keep Stock Inventory Management Solutions help ensure you have the right stuff in the right place at exactly the right time. Visit Granger.com slash Keepstock to learn more. Granger for the ones who get it done. Shop new looks for the new year at Macy's One Day Sale. Going on now with deals of the day like sweaters from Clubroom, Alfani, Inc., and more. $19.99 to $29.99. And get 40 to 60% off coats and boots. Then add the finishing touch to any look with fine jewelry clearance, 70% off. Plus, get your dot-com orders fast with contact-free curbside pickup. Or you can pick them up inside the store. For details, visit Macy's.com. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. 
ChristopherMedia.net. All right, let's turn it over to someone else. Who's next? I'll hop in. Um, so, going into the gas station, it was the best beer, not the most expensive beer. And the gas station I went to from the uh, Colt 45 that I'm still tasting um, <laughs> was pretty small, pretty limited selection, but they did have six pack of creature. Oh, Cooper. man, I love it. Yeah. yeah. So, a little bit about this beer. Um, I was very pleased to see it. But uh, Creature Comforts, I think they're our second biggest brewery in, in Georgia behind Sweetwater. And this is really the beer that made them. Um, Georgia, we weren't allowed, breweries weren't allowed to sell, sell, sell out of the breweries up until just a couple of years ago. And so getting a lot of special release beers and things just didn't happen because they, they couldn't justify making those because everything had to go through distribution. It, was, it really sucked. Um, now you can actually go to a brewery, buy a pint, and get up to a case to go, whereas four years ago, you couldn't. You couldn't get any beer to go at all from the brewery, which is really sad. Um, so anyway, when they came out with this about, I don't remember how many years ago, but it was the first real hype beer that started hitting distribution here, and people would chase this around as soon as it just as soon as a, a beer store would get it, it would sell out within an hour if they posted anything on social media. Um, and people would just buy as much of it as they could whenever they saw it because we just didn't get that much of it and there wasn't that great a selection. So to find it in a not-so-great gas station just sitting on the shelf was pretty cool as <laughs> I remember chasing it years ago. And it's uh, got a great great citrusy smell to it but not overpowering uh, real crisp nice fruit it's not it, this was before all the high, all the hazy ipas came out so this was one of the the ones because it had such a good tropical flavor that people went nuts for um and it still does it's not hazy i would say today drinking it it's more like when you get an east west coast ipa hybrid but a lot of great melon just really well balanced just a good good drinking beer so i'm so glad to get the taste of that last one out of my mouth now. <laughs> so cheers, fellas. Cheers, man. Yeah, I remember um, having people send me that from afar. Um, Doug out might remember when I was living in Michigan, I won one of the beer groups I was in when they celebrated their thousandth member. They did a random drawing on out of the all thousand members. Uh, they were going to send a thousand ounces to somebody, and I I was the lucky winner. Out of like 500 people who entered, because not all 1,000 entered. So for about a month, every day, three to four boxes of beer just appeared. I don't know. They had like, you know, 25 <laughs> people volunteered to send. And just, I remembered uh, the back deck and dugout. You've been my old Michigan house. We had like a railing on the deck, and I had lined them all up, and I did this video of going down the line. of. I waited till every box was there and took a, a picture of all this, and... It was just amazing. And then, like, there at the very end, there's maybe four or five straggler boxes that uh, and came a couple weeks later, and I had friends over for a poker game, and I had so many boxes, some of them I hadn't even opened yet. I'd just bring a random box that hadn't been opened up to the table, and I said, whoever wins this hand wins this box of beer. And it was so fun when they won. They'd open it up in front of everybody and see what was in there. But there were more than one uh, Tropicalia from Creature Comforts in some of the boxes I received, and I can remember out of all the stuff I got, that was one of my most treasured ones. It really is a great drinking beer, and I also have an uncle in Atlanta and, and traveled there a few years ago, and the local beer store had some, and I remember how much I loved it, and I bought a couple, you know, four packs or six packs. I don't remember what the format was, but I, I jumped on that, man. That's a great beer. Yeah, and they, they opened up a second facility in Athens. So they're in Athens where University of Georgia is, um, great little brewery, or not little anymore, but great brewery. Uh, they also make some killer stouts and some great sours. But they uh, they opened up a second facility that's much bigger that they're doing a lot of production out of. So now everybody can get Tropicalia basically whenever they want, which is a wonderful thing. Well, awesome. I'm really glad that you, uh, you were able to find that at a gas station. That's great news because I do remember when it was a very coveted and 
it's still the great good beer. It's it's amazing how people value scarcity over the liquid. Because, you know, there's some great beers out there that are readily available that you can just buy on the shelf and at one time were like like, you know, impossible to find and now you can get it everywhere. But um, that shouldn't cheapen the liquid. All right, who's up next? Uh, I'll jump in next. Um, what I have is this is a made by River Rouge, or excuse me, Rivers Edge Brewing Company out of Milford, Michigan, and from their Navigator series, and it's called the the Hurricane in Kingston. Um, so this is a it's a saison with fresh ginger. And key limes aged in, aged in rum barrels, and uh, they claim that it is uh, supposed to taste like the uh, the drink uh, a dark and stormy. So, I'm gonna crack it here and see what we have. Well, it's got a, it's got a very robust uh, head to it, and it's a very light, kind of pale yellow, not quite a straw color. Um, the, uh, the aroma is definitely farmhouse ale kind of, uh, it's not quite a horse blanket, but it's, it's got that, that very grassy, I can smell the lime, um, the ginger, a little bit of the spice from the ginger is coming through in the aroma. Um, so let's give it a taste and see what happens. Wow. This is, uh, there's a lot of ginger in the flavor. Um, we get a little bit of the rum barrel, um, more of the rum than the barrel. I really don't get a whole lot of wood out of it uh, apparently it was aged for three months in the rum barrels but definitely the ginger the lime it's a uh, it's a very kind of crisp refreshing beer this uh you know maybe i should have saved this for our upcoming episode on summer sippers because uh this would be a great hot weather drink which uh it's warm enough out today so that uh that still goes for today um said the uh the head on it is very it's it's lingering it, it, it poured originally it was about two inches worth ahead um and it's mainly settled down but there's still some some very large bubbles clinging to the outside of the glass um but in the center it's gone down pretty good um yeah just a really really nice flavor to it like i said the ginger ginger is very predominant the lime is good um the rum is subtle. It's subtle, but it's there. And uh, yeah, this is—I'm uh, going to say—it's upwards of upwards of eight percent. But it's since it is such a kind of an easy, easy drinking beer, uh, one might want to be careful with this one. This, uh, well, actually, nine point six percent. Sounds much yeah. better than a peanut butter beer. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Anyway, I'd like to make a few comments. I, when I was back in Michigan, I did meet um, the head brewer at River's Edge, who I believe that probably is not the same brewer that is now. But you know, I'm just happy to hear that River's Edge has beers in any gas station. That's a great accomplishment for you to be able to find a beer like that in a gas station. So I'd keep getting gas at that beer station. Um, the, the other thing is the dark and stormy. I used to sell Gosling's Rum, and man, that's one of my favorite all-time mixed drinks. It's ginger beer and a dark rum, Gosling's. And I've tried to make it with other rums. I tried to make it with Myers rum, which is a great rum, but you can't make it really without Gosling's. It's, it, I don't know what it is. Um, that's the national drink of Barbados. I'm kind of surprised that they said uh, they put Kingston in. That's a Jamaican. That would be Myers. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. That, you know, maybe they just didn't do their homework or it's didn't like, care. Uh, Jamaican, it would be. Uh, hey, you enjoyed the beer. Uh, a really cool beer to, to have on this show that you could find a beer like that. And I think one of the great findings of this is I thought we were going to have a bunch of Samuel Adams Boston lagers. And like, I, I know every gas station here has kilt lifter, which is four peaks, which is a brewery that was bought out by AB it's still a great local Arizona brewery with a lot of following. And it's a nice solid Scotch ale, but I thought we were going to have a lot of Sam Adams and, Maybe some Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, and and we're finding out that you know gas stations are realizing that you know customers are looking for more, and uh, it's great to hear some of these great beers. That, but I don't know if anybody's going to top dugouts, um, so I'll let him go next. Yeah, well, this this gas station that uh, that I get, that I go to is uh, 
it's like two and a half blocks from my house. And uh, they used to just be just a shell gas station, and that was it, just a gas station. You know, sold cigarettes and, a cu- and some pop. And they tore the whole thing down, and they rebuilt it. And they put in really a, a huge uh, liquor store. Uh, they put in a, a pizza place and then a, 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 a big, you know, big beer selection. They, when they first opened, they had five coolers of singles. One entire thing uh, was devoted just to Belgians. They have the, uh, the walk-in beer cave, but instead of holding cases of, uh, you know, Natty Light and, and Miller and Bud and stuff, it's completely filled with craft beers. So That's great to see, and that's, that's what I think we've discovered on this episode is that a lot of gas stations are realizing that there's, you know, opportunities to be had by offering a, a wider range of, of – of, of great beers, so yeah, they probably make more money off of the, uh, the beer and the liquor store part than they do off of the gas. Oh, absolutely! The gas is just the, to get you there. It's, they make all their money on the in, you know incremental purchases in, in store. Absolutely. Okay. All right, dugout. I can't wait to hear you review this beer. So take it away. Okay, from that gas station, <laughs> the grand finale is a good one. Yeah. What's um, and what's the name of that gas station again? John Golden. Uh, the gas station is just Shell, but uh, the party store part of it is called Barrels and Vines. Barrels and Vines. Okay, from Barrels and Vines. All right, I know it's in a and it's a Chimay glass, but it's it's a rather proper glassware for this beer, uh, which is a um, West Mall Trappistale double, and um, this was on the like in the way, way back shelf of, of just sort of like discounted beers right by the bathrooms. And, um, this one was four bucks, right? The Island of Misfit toys. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. The Island of Misfit beers, $4. Oh, small double. (laughs) Um, so those of you not familiar, I'm going to read a little bit of a description here. Uh, West small double 7% is a dark red brown beer with a rich complex taste thanks to re-fermentation in the bottle you pick up touches of caramel malt fruity esters reminiscent of ripe banana the beer pearls beneath a covering of dense cream colored froth a lovely lace pattern forms on the inside of the glass once empty the long dry finish of this balanced mild trappist beer will stay with you trappist or double so cheers man this was a nice find. You think? <laughs> you know, I got a lot of that fruit esters um, and the, uh, just a little bit more off of this one. In 1865, the monks of West Mall started brewing a dark Trappist beer in addition to their table beer. They adjust the recipe in 1926, doubling the amount of raw ingredients to produce a new, stronger beer. Double is a logical name for this doubled beer, so it's more often simply called Trappist to this day. The 1926, 1926 recipe is the basis for West Mall Duval. You know, how cool is that? The original recipe is still going strong. Some of uh, you guys have way better stations than I do. Yeah, for four bucks, man. And it was just, I know they thought, like, oh, this has been hanging out here for years. We better discount it. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm going back this weekend and get the rest of it. <laughs> can't blame you there man. yeah i was like to check the uh the clearance shelf they have there because uh they, they put they'll put barrel aged beers and stuff there just because uh they've been in the store for so long and not realizing the you know the selling potential of some of these beers and the fact don't don't tell them <laughs> no yeah, just don't, don't say anything I mean, you just buy them up so a little bit about a little bit more about this beer i mean you just get a lot of roasted malts and, you know, it mentioned the, the banana esters, and that's, I don't know, I think you can refine your palate a little more than banana on, on a beer this complex. I mean, it goes beyond, like, what a banana is, you know, like, Belgian beers taste like banana. Okay. So, these, a beer like this is just so, I don't know, it's complex, you know, it, this beer could be even better a year from now. Um, just phenomenal. And I find it at a gas station. <laughs> For four bucks. You know, For that's, four I think, bucks, yeah. I think the key findings here, you know, unbelievable that we found 
great gas stations with great beers. And even the bad beer wasn't that bad, with the exception of John Hills. I think his was probably the worst. But and oh, even no. Scott, John, I, I'm so sorry. You didn't, like, you didn't like your sour, Scott, but that's I think people that like sours it's, would probably like it. Yeah, that's me. I, it, it, that, I like nothing sours to do with and sour. I didn't like my sour. Yeah, Doug's might be pretty bad you know? too. I, and I, I'm going to say that that my gas station is not probably a great gas station. I mean, I kind of wish I had a buddy in there watching my back while I was looking at <laughs> my beer. But I, I did manage to find, you know, craft beers, even in a gas station like that, which I think is amazing where we are now versus 10 years ago. Well, I would put my local gas station up against anybody's in the country. I mean, to have Chimay Grand Reserve, seventeen ninety nine a bottle, you know. And I think part of it is I live, you know, kind of far out. And grant, you know, kudos to the management of the store. They know that there's a market here that you know people don't want to drive, you know, ten miles somewhere. And they they have made the the space in their cooler for good stuff, and they're making good profit on these brands, and we're happy to pay it. So I'm I I, I have to admit I'm back to a uh, pilot gas station yesterday with my son. And I looked in there, and when I was looking at the pilot gas station, the best beer was uh, the cheap beer was Natural Light, and I just walked out. And I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> so, and the best beer in there, I think, I actually didn't find any. They didn't even have Sam Adams. So, pilots like a trucker's stop. That's not really a gas station. So, I eliminated that from contention. All right. Well, that was a pretty cool episode. So good, good uh, idea. I got to give credit to John Hill uh, for giving us the idea to include the cheapos. Uh, he suffered probably the most. Maybe, maybe dug out might might have suffered more. But no, I uh, maybe equally um, he might have suffered more than me. But this was bad. Ugh. <laughs> well, John Golden and I are probably not that bad, and I think Scott suffered, but only because he doesn't like the, the sour style. I think a sour oh, fan. I, I don't. Fine I, I, I know I, 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 I can't say that because I do love sour beers. I think that thing just. Oh, I didn't know that. Frank, okay. well. it, it was a Frankenstein of beers. I think I think it, it I smell think it did not match. You know, it did you know not what? match its body. But, but yeah, I think out, you can find bargains on the uh, closeout shelf. So always be looking for a bargain. <laughs> Any closing <laughs> comments, everybody, or is it just time to head to Mexico City? Just one, one quick comment on John saying uh, you said you, you beer, your cheap beer tasted or smelled like feet. I want to actually suggest that it maybe it was more like hooves since it was cold 45. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay tuned until the next episode to see if I'm still tasting it because right now I still am. <laughs> oh, you might have to get some. Oh, you might have to get a big hitter out of the out of the cellar for to just erase everything and. And remember, uh, yeah, that's so it for our listeners. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, um, just full disclosure when the episode is off the air, we usually hang out and have another beer. I'm gonna beg uh, John Hill to find something really strong tasting to get that taste out of his mouth. Go so, with um, it, it yes. was his idea to implement it, uh, a mandatory 12 ounces uh, that you had to get through, and uh, thankfully, I think John Golden and I won the contest with palatable beers that weren't that. Painful to drink, but um, that well, being said, you know, I'm really happy that we found great beers and gas stations. That's a great uh, sign for craft beer. You know, uh, gas station uh, managers and owners are realizing, you know, uh, that the market there is a market for good beers, and that's good for all of us. It's a win-win. So, anybody have anything to add before our trip to Mexico City? All right, I guess not. So, thanks for listening. Um, Find us on Instagram. I am really, really ramping up the Instagram game. So I'm going to try to post pictures of all these beers we had. Please uh, engage with us. Send us pictures of beers you want us to review. You'd be surprised at how accommodating we'll be. We'll figure it out. We might even invite you to join us for an episode. So we love we love you to uh, uh, communicate with us. So you know, hit us up on Instagram, at, uh, Twitter, at Beer Nuts Podcast. And... Join us on a trip to Mexico City someday. So as they say in old Mexico City, A-M-M-M. 
Shop new looks for the new year at Macy's One Day Sale. Going on now with deals of the day like sweaters from Clubroom, Alfani, Inc., and more. $19.99 to $29.99. And get 40 to 60% off coats and boots. Then add the finishing touch to any look with fine jewelry clearance, 70% off. Plus, get your dot-com orders fast with contact-free curbside pickup. Or you can pick them up inside the store. For details, visit Macy's.com. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net.